Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Deanna and you're watching Orchid. I had planned to do some update videos this week on my back deck and landing grow spaces, but I thought with everything going on at the moment, um, a little bit of a lighter video was probably needed. The whole world is in crisis mode. It's very scary. You know, I suppose things are certainly looking to get a little bit worse before they get better. But you know what? Hand washing and social distancing are going to be our best defense at the moment. So I absolutely support people staying at home, looking after yourselves, collectively looking after our most vulnerable. But yeah, I work as a doctor in a hospital, which I don't know, is a little bit scary and it's Itself, but I think I'm probably in one workplace that certainly won't be winding down this period. It's uh, going to almost certainly be the opposite. So I think an Orkies in Bloom video is in order just to keep my sanity uh, and also just put out a little positivity uh, into the world with some pretty blooms. So yeah, let's get started, hey? So first up down here we've got BLC Copper Queen. She's a really vigorous hybrid who blooms pretty much off every growth. Last year she did have a couple of spikes and I had the plant up there uh, just underneath those lights. The buds were too close to the light and it was too hot and they blasted. So I have since turned down those lights but I actually didn't realize that it was throwing out another spike and it was still up there so it stayed a bit too close to the lights again and you can see definitely some signs of stress in the blooms and even on this one you can see a little bit almost like a burn there but she still managed to bloom and she is an absolutely stunning bloom. Uh, she opens up like a coppery colour, hence the name, and then turns into this beautiful vivid yellow colour. She kind of just looks like a daffodil. Very, very cute. You can see that I actually have a back portion in this plant that's died off. So it was split um, and repotted back in October. October 2018. So the front portion's taken off. You can see it's sort of growing up out of the pot a little bit and it's working on some new growths there but the back portion died off when I went on my honeymoon last year. But yeah I'm pretty confident this is just signs of stress um, and hopefully those new growths down there will still pop out some nice blooms for me. I've got a couple of Phragmopediums um, in spike at the moment. So this one is Rag praying mantis cross with Andretti. So I wasn't very impressed with these blooms. It's the first blooming for me and it's had two flowers and they were both a little bit deformed. They didn't open up properly. So I really hope the future blooms improve. It was also repotted around October in 2018 and because frags are kept fairly evenly moist, I think it's probably time for the frags to be repotted. I don't know, I might just see what it does with the next flower. If it does make another flower, yeah, if it's still deformed I will definitely go ahead and repot this one so I'm not sure if that's a sign of the plant being stressed or maybe the eBay seller just sold it because it had deformed blooms and I'm the sucker that bought it who knows <laughs> Frag Cardinal Birchwood is like the gift that just keeps on giving. So she is in spike. I think she came into spike about the same time last year as well. But with the sequential blooms, it stayed in spike for months and months and months. This is a very, very vigorous plant. Um, you can see it's got quite an extensive root system on it and it is super thirsty. It'll just drink up whatever I put in there within two days. So not too much going on on this top shelf, but I've got a few sheets. So Iwanagara Apple Blossom, which was very recently repotted, has a sheath there and it's growing another new growth just here. Lelia Purpurata here has brought out its first sheath for me since I got her like, I don't know, 18 months ago. And because my summers are so long, a lot of my seasonal bloomers, the ones that grow these sheaths and rest a little bit in winter and then bloom in spring. They have an extended growing season so I tend to be able to get a couple of rounds of growth so it's working on two new growths there so hopefully I get two more sheets on that one as well. Just to show you another example of the seasonal bloomers this is Cattleya Bella which is a purpurata cross and she's got two massive sheets there if you can see those and it is actually working on two new growths there if you can see so I've got a chance at four sheets 
to bloom in spring. So my epidendrums are all doing very well. These guys are very, very resilient, but you can see the size of that um, spike on my Wedding Valley Sakura. I think eventually I might try growing these guys out in my outdoor grow space. I do have another epidendrum out there that's in direct sun and it seems to have acclimatized fine. So yeah, just space wise, they obviously take up a lot of room in here. They probably deserve a bit more light than I can give them in this back deck grow space. I do have one no ID um, Dendrobium phalaenopsis type here which I only just repotted in January because I repotted it it didn't bloom however um, this is one that I got from my grandma and I do have a cakey that's in bloom at the moment which I'm going to show you Phalaenopsis type dendrobiums are doing exceptionally well. I'm not sure if you can see, but those canes are about a meter tall now. So they are also getting a little bit out of control. <laughs> Toby's just plonked himself at my feet. Okay, don't move. I'll, I'll move. It's fine. All right. So this is Dendrobium Temesak Princess, and I've now got a lawnmower going on in the background as well. So very sorry, but this is, I guess, what happens when you film on a Saturday morning. But I've always been a big fan of this little Dendrobium. Well, not so little anymore. We'll talk about that in a sec. Beautiful, beautiful pinky purple color. It's just such a simple bloom. A very light floral fragrance, but she's just stunning, I think lovely spike this year this new cane is over two feet tall and that's compared to this was last year's cane there so this plant every year it will start growing a new growth it'll flower towards the end of summer and then only once those flowers have fallen it'll start growing a new growth and that's the same with a couple of my other dendrobium phalaenopsis types upstairs which i'll show you this is in contrast to this one which is genting royal cross with white fairy which you can see it's starting some new growths it grew two new growths this year um, and you can see this one is pretty much the same size as the Temesak princess there but it's got another spike developing here and a third spike that's starting to come out from this that cane here which has already flowered but yeah obviously that's just genetics this is going to outgrow this pot very soon you can see already though it's sort of leaning to one side and I've got some tissue paper in here just to keep it stable in a very heavy decorative container and I just got it against this couch as well for a little bit of support so it doesn't fall over I don't know if these canes get much bigger what I'm going to do with these plants they're they're massive and they really do belong in a shade house somewhere speaking of out of control look at our passion fruit vines so Jad planted these I think it was only back in um, November or something and they were tiny at the time they didn't even reach like that wire grid there and now look at it so I think we need to get on top of that pretty quickly before it grows into the neighbor's yard. So I don't think I've shown you guys, um, but I have hung these wire grids over here. Well, I didn't hang them, Jared hung them, so I'll give him some credit for that. Um, and I'm thinking of putting another little one across here as well. Uh, it seems stupid that I struggle with light, but these guys are kept on my back deck and I don't get successful flowering from them because in winter I have to put that shade blind down and then it's not enough light. This still gets direct sun but you can see it's sort of between these houses so it's for a limited time and then the sun goes sort of behind this fence it is definitely brighter because it's outside but we'll see how that goes they're still they've only recently come out here so they're still acclimatizing and to be fair this week's been quite overcast and rainy so as it heats up again i'll really have to keep a close eye on them but what we actually came out here to see are these spikes so this is Aerides Quinquevulnera Variation Magnifica and three absolutely gorgeous spikes developing there. So I can't wait to see them bloom. They've never been shifted out of their original setup along with this cat layer have fully attached <laughs> to the fence now. So the other benefit of keeping these guys out here is you can see that these spikes attract a lot of ants. They produce a lot of sugar sap. I mean, I'm very happy to have these ants on here. I think it's really cute actually. Like I'm much more happy to have lots of ants crawling around out here outside rather than on my back. Tactic. So I apologize the light's not great down here but this is my front entrance and this is one of the beautiful oncidiums that I got from the orchid show and I don't have a tag in there but I will put the name on the screen now. 
So you can see the top buds have actually blasted and that happened when I moved this plant inside. So you can imagine like it was 35 degrees outside and I've put it inside where it was air conditioned and about 25 to 28 degrees um, lower humidity. Just sudden changes in the environment like that for the buds I tend to make them a bit sensitive to blasting. But it is an absolutely beautiful bloom. That red is just divine really really pretty and then over here i showed you the mother plant which is out on the back deck this is a keiki that came off when my grandma gave me this plant about two years ago and it's doing really well you can see that the new growth again is about twice the size of the old one so the bloom is like a yellow green color and it's got this light cerulea purple um, in its throat very simple very cute these flowers are over two months old now so they've probably only got a few more weeks left in them but it is really hanging in there and doing well so we're up on my landing now and we're just catching the tail end of most of these species fowl blooms but it smells pretty wonderful here nonetheless. First up we've got fowl pultra and she's just going over now but check out those beautiful glossy blooms. You can see that the blooms sort of point downwards so I have staked this one up a little bit but she was yeah very beautiful when she was in full bloom. Fowl cornu cervi here with just a single bloom left on its last legs as well. Let's have a look at that beautiful bloom. So at one stage it did have two blooms on each spike. However, these spikes are now two years old. It has never brought out a new spike for me. It didn't ever establish very well in its previous pot, but it's been repotted a couple of months ago and it's actually doing much better in this pot. See a nice chunky root down there, but you can see that its last leaves were really not impressive. So I'm hoping it does a little bit better over the next 12 months and actually manages to bring out a new spike for me next summer. So Falbalina here with one flower left. So it's got two spikes, that's the oldest spike there. And I just noticed this morning that this spike was growing down into the medium. So I've just propped it up with this little tag here. I'm having quite a few issues with these um, species fowl spikes this year. What I think is on more mature plants, they sort of grow along the leaf surface, but otherwise, yeah, they do tend to grow down even despite the light but it definitely messes with the aesthetics a little bit when you have to prop them up. Um, this Bellina especially, it's got these two spikes growing in two different directions. So yeah, it's not the prettiest look, but the flowers themselves are beautiful and one of my favorite fragrances. So yeah, I think it's working on a new little bud there, but I think the older spike has stopped producing flowers now. Um, this area up here, I've just kept the windows open, but it's been going down to about 20 degrees at night, which is a little bit cooler this week than it has been. So next we've got a first flowering for this one, and I got her, I think in July last year, and it's meant to be a Violacea Variation Cerulea. That's what I got her off eBay as, but I don't think it is. I've looked at some of the pictures of other cerulea variations and this one is definitely a lot more pink. Kind of looks like the Bellina a little bit, maybe a cross between the Bellina and Violacea, but she is absolutely stunning. A really, really beautiful flower. Fragrance wise, she sort of smells like a mix between the Violacea and Bellina, but probably tending more towards the Violacea side. Um, quite heavy on the cinnamon, but it's definitely not as strong as my Violacea. That little wavy psychedelic pattern in there and we've got my beautiful Violacea here growing a second bud always looking beautiful in my collection and smells wonderfully of cinnamon donuts so it's got another spike back there from last year which never bloomed and I do remember last year it didn't bloom off the previous year's spikes and actually ended up losing them so um, I'm wondering if I'm going to lose that spike as well which is odd the spikes should still bloom every year um, I shouldn't be losing them but yeah I'm not sure what's going on the plant itself is very healthy um, it grows beautiful big leaves every year the root system is very good so i just have to let the plant do what it wants to do i guess and then on the shelf we've got dendrobium new hope which is a mini variety you can see the size of the canes so it remains quite a small compact little dendrobium which i mean is pretty good value for little blooms like this check them out aren't they absolutely stunning i love that gradient of color and the shape is super cute it's not fragrant at all, but yeah, it's definitely a lovely, lovely looking bloom. 
All my Mordier puffs are doing really well after their repots. But let me show you. This one's in better light. That's a bit better. So this is Puff Yi Ying Green Coral, which I got as a tiny little seedling just over two years ago. And I've got a little spike, as you can see. So I feel like a really proud orchid mum. And of course, we've got my beautiful Cycopsis Mendenhall Hildos, which I just can't get enough of. But I have put out a recent spotlight video, so you can definitely check her out there. So Lelia purpurata here as well on my balcony has a couple of sheets developing another one up here and I've got some new growths coming up here as well. Yeah, I think I've said it before in previous videos, but my Lelia purpurata seem to have had to settle into their pots after they've been repotted. None of them have ever given me sheets after being repotted. It takes like one growing season for the new sheets to appear after repotting. So yeah, I don't know, it's just something I've observed and something maybe to consider. So sorry about the wind. I've been waiting for like three minutes for the wind to settle down, but I don't think it's going to settle down, so I'm just going to have to film through it. It's my beautiful Shari baby. My pride and joy has six new spikes, I think, but it does have this one finished spent spike here. Um, I usually wait for my Oncidium spikes to go brown before cutting them back so the nutrients can resorb for whatever it's worth. But I have been finding um, in the last couple of months that my Oncidium spikes have been staying green even though they lose their flowers. So I don't know what's up with that but just for the sake of aesthetics I might chop this one back. Down here I've got a beautiful spike developing on Howiara Chansey Lovely. I've got this Dendrobium Phalaenopsis type. It's a no ID just spiking. I'm hoping it's going to be an impressive spike because look at the size of this growth compared to the last one. So my dendrobiums are generally doing very, very well. You can see here's another one which should be spiking soon any day now. But yeah, these are um, examples of ones with single directions of growth which seem to grow one growth every season. It'll bloom and flower and then once the flowers fade it'll actually rest over winter for quite a few months and then um, during spring or the beginning of summer it'll start to work on its new growth again. Oncidium Twinkle here is developing some spikes. Um, they're a little bit difficult to see because they're so fine and actually I can't see my screen very well at the moment so not sure if you guys can see very well but I've counted at least 10 spikes despite having a pretty nasty scale infection um, over summer. It seems to have recovered okay and I do still see the occasional little bit of scale here and there but it seems to still be quite healthy and vigorous and spiking for me. I've got this absolutely gorgeous Neo-Phoenicia hybrid here in bloom and this is variety Koto cross with Shuteno but gosh she is absolutely a stunning bloom beautiful beautiful pink blooms and the fragrance is exactly like the other Neo-Phoenicia Falcatas but probably slightly less intense but it's still got that sweet powdery sort of perfume this one here is um, Oncidium Heaven Scent Redolence, a very odd spike. So it's just been randomly blooming at different spots on the spike and I thought it was done but it's just opening up these new flowers here. Now this girl smells exactly like the Shari Baby but I think it's actually a little bit stronger and these blooms are just beautiful. Nice chocolatey maroon colour with white edging so I think this is definitely going to be another favorite in my collection she's just in a very small pot at the moment working on a new growth so she'll need repotting um, in the next few weeks Bellara or Alisara, Peggy Ruth Carpenter here looking absolutely beautiful in the sunlight there so she looks quite different to last year last year she had quite a bit more yellow in through the sepals and petals but she seems to be more purely pink this year but I love that splotchy patterning and look at those wild looking sepals and petals she's got two more blooms to open up there um, very light peppery fragrance nothing too overwhelming yeah she's definitely a stunner I just noticed this twinkle, a couple more spikes developing, you can see that in there. So I do tend to get a lot more flowering in my spring and autumn months. I do have these blooms opening up though. So this is Vornara Golden Spice, beautiful, beautiful spotted patterning. She's a colour changer as well, so she opens up this coppery red colour and it'll fade into a more yellow. Should be a nice little display there. 
Dendrobium little green apples up here has some buds forming. It's got quite a few more spikes actually. So there's one there, another one coming up here. I think there's another one developing here. The second round of flowering for this dendrobium this season. Calaya jungle hotspots cross with tenebrosa has some buds emerging from that sheath there. And I've got a few more sheaths here and there as well. And then last of all, we've got two spikes on my big brassier hybrid. This is Bratonia Phoenix Rising White Light and she is very, very pretty. Now this one does smell very strongly of pepper. So it's not my favorite fragrance, but she is absolutely stunning. I actually really love this arrangement. Like um, the flowers are really well spaced apart and it just makes for a really lovely display. Look at them, they're like little dancing stars. And I've still got another spike to open up all right everyone well that's it from me um i hope you have enjoyed a little bit of light entertainment from this orchids in bloom and spike especially if you're stuck at home if you are unwell i do wish you from the bottom of my heart a very speedy recovery but yeah i just want to encourage you all to look after yourselves look after each other and be kind to one another and most importantly wash your hands and don't panic by sending much love to you all and happy growing until i see you next time bye